Hello, Charlie TCG here, and welcome back to Looking Ahead, the series where I break down and analyze the meta what's happening over in Japan and how it'll impact our one. And today, we're going to talk about Lost Box, and is it taking over the meta in Japan? It was absolutely dominant in the day one and day two meta percentage for the Champions League, which we're going to break down today, as well as also in the City League Championships, where it took a multiple first places. So we're going to break down exactly what Lost Box is looking like in this uh, meta in Japan, so as well as how we can prepare for it when we finally get this stuff in the Twilight Masquerade. Plus, we'll also go break down the rest of the top eight and top 16 lists from the Champions League this past weekend, so as also some of the brand new cards and some very fun lists from the Champions League as well. So without further ado, let's jump right into these brand new archetypes and cards. So let's look at Luxray EX, and honestly, this is a very, very fun, very much reminds me of that Luxray V, which has a very similar attack for its first one. For double colors, 120 damage, look at your opponent's hand and discard one card you may find there. Now, a lot of people might think this is very, very good as a controlled archetype on its own. Team up with the likes of a Reset Stamp, sometimes even an Iono, sometimes even Crushing Hammers, team up with a ton of very destructive cards. You can make your opponent pretty much top deck every single archetype, an extreme card from that deck. I think this is a very good archetype on its own. I think it could be quite good in control or its own sort of control archetype, but I do think it could be a little bit of a hindrance. It is a stage two, so it takes quite a while. You are reliant, very handy. Eerie and even TM Devo could be very much impactful to you. So maybe you should build like a TM Evo that build for this one with Flutter Mains and Mimikyu. But let's see exactly next week when this is legal for Japan. We've also got brand new Ace Wake, the last one, Secret Box, which a lot of people actually are divisive if this is an amazing card or pretty bad. You can discard three cards from your hand to use this effect. If you do, search your deck for one item card, one tool card, one supporter, and one stadium. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Instantly, I think this could be pretty powerful in Shin Pao. Why is this powerful? Well, if you can kind of get any item, because you might want to have superior engine retrieval. You could get your sports card. Well, that's an irritant, which you can get your um, Bat plus Red Candy, a stadium card, potentially focus up for drawing fact tool card. You might even want to put like a specific cool tool card like the um, Future Reset Energy Capture or even some of the Defiance Band in a Shin Pao to have this aggressive sort of approach. But I do think the likes of a Prime Catch is much better than a Secret Box, but this could in fact have a very good impact in these slower sort of archetypes, slower type of cards, I think this could be very, very impactful in certain decks. Polyrath, I really like for this attack, jumping up at 120 damage. And if you do 120 more damage, shuffle this Pokemon all cards attached into your deck. Your team is in like an Irida hit and run deck with likes of Mimikyu, Fluttermane, Klefki. This could be pretty fun, pretty powerful, and very annoying to deal with by, it's very easy to power up with pretty much do 220 damage if you type a double cut turbo energy attached to it. But I do think it could be a fun stage two Pokemon and could be very much recyclable from the likes of Irida. My Tiana has a very nice attack, pack hunting, 30 damage plus 90 more damage for each of my bench My Tiana. Doing an additional 270 damage plus the 30, 300 damage for one energy, Pretty powerful, so don't rule out Mighty Anna. I think it could be very, very strong, but it's only really powerful if you do, in fact, have all four of them out in play and you don't prize any archetypes. So could be tricky, but 300 damage for one NG, very, very good. And the rest of it I want to talk about is a Heatran and Handy Fan. Heatran has an amazing ability, which if it's in the active spot and is damaged by any of opponent's attack, even if it's KO, the opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. And for a steel and two colors, 50 damage, discard all metal energy attached to this, there's 50 more feet energy you discard. Team is in the likes of Metang, which obviously you flood the board with loads of energies anyway. This, in fact, could be very, very powerful. You could hit these big, big attacks turn of turn of turn. Even if it's a discard, you can shuffle it in with likes of su uh, Super Rod. This could be pretty fun. Um, I don't know if it's going to be very powerful, but it could be a good late game in the like of Dialga Metang deck. And Handy Fan as well is whatever the active Pokemon is taking any damage from attack, you may move an energy from an attacking Pokemon to one of your opponent's bench. I like this. I think it's very fun to control. Team with like a Rev Room, you have four of these attached to it. You're pretty much moving every single energy attached to it. I like this, especially if it gets Turbo Iron Hands deck. You can move away some energies, even if they get KO'd the next turn. I think it's a very, very strong combination. Could be very, very good in control. Heck, Team with likes of Claw, Vic, and Discard went and move an energy at the same time. Very, very scary. Now, let's look at the rest of the Champions League, the day one and day two meta percentage which is very, very nicely being um, confirmed. We can see Charizard was 21.3%, very similar to how we're seeing likes of EUIC and Orlando, and even likes of Perth Regional. So it's kind of like on par we are in that sort of level. Like I mentioned, Lost Box was at number two spot by 12.7%. It is an absolutely very, very powerful archetype. And it's good to see this kind of like get that representation. Definitely focusing on the likes of the likes of Blood Moon, Earth, Luna, Raikou, and even the likes of Turbo, um, sorry, just regular Iron Hands and 
um, Roy Moon, are definitely his key partners of choice. Lugia was in fact number three spot, being 12.3. Again, this makes sense. The likes of Survival Cast became a very, very good staple of choice, plus the likes of Bloody Nuts Luna. This made uh, Lugia have an attacker, even if they can't get the energies required for it from the likes of the Archeops. Guard again has had a huge rise, actually dethroned the likes of Shen Pao to be that fourth spot, being 10.3%, Shen Pao being number 7.3%. Giratina decks became 7%, Turbo decks became, um, Turbo Iron Hands became 4.3, Brewery Moon became a 3.5, and Arceus decks became 3.3. So this is actually a pretty good representation. Obviously in day two, you you can in fact change your archetypes, but a lot of people have that presence that the top four archetypes going into this meta game was likes of Charizard, Lost Box, and um, Lugia, as well as also Gardevoir. There's a little bit of shame that we are seeing a dip of Shen Pao, but we are seeing it not get as many wins in the Champions, sorry, in the City Leagues, who has also didn't have the best show in the last two Champions Leagues. Now, if we just shift over to the day two meta percentage chart, we can see that it had a huge increase in the likes of Lost Box and Charizard. Charizard shifting up to 28.1%, nearly 30% of the day two meta percentage was Charizard. Yet, obviously, in the top four, three of the four of them was, in fact, Charizard, where finals was, in fact, Charizard itself. So we already know it's a very, very powerful archetype, and it currently gets stronger. A lot of people are adapting to the likes of a tour build by having the likes of the 1-1 Bibberal, having the 202 2 lines of Pidgeot, and some even playing likes of Clefer. Unfortunately, that makes it incredibly powerful by having that, if you're behind in prices a little bit, or as soon as your opponent takes a knockout, you can instantly punish them by making them down, go down to two cards. If they don't have a, a, any Pidgeots or a um, Bibberal setup on the opponent's side, you can really punish them, and then potentially you can win the game straight there. Lost Box, in fact, did get an increase by gaining 16.5%. We already know it got very, very well by gaining multiple top eights and some even top 16 placements. We know how powerful that archetype is. Luca did make a little tip by going down to 11.3, but Gardevoir increased by going to 11.2. I think Gardevoir is in a very, very good position. We saw it get that very dominant top four placement and even did very, very well in Orlando region by also getting a top four in the same weekend. We've seen Gardevoir time and time and time get much stronger. People thought it was a written off deck. I, for one, definitely thought it was but definitely last month or so practicing putting a lot of effort into guys well, I've seen this increase and I definitely am very excited to talk about it in my next mastery video which will be out in a couple of weeks time Garatina also did very very well it kind of has adapted just a little bit by having the likes of Blood and Asluna take away from the likes of the um Iron Leaves. The reason why this is the case I do think it is purely on the basis that Iron Leaves is only really really good in Charizard whereas Bloody Nurse Luna could be using nearly every single other archetype. Bloody Nurse Luna pretty much hitting for 240 damage. Yes, you can't attack next turn, but you already play a lot of switching cards. Kind of makes a lot of sense into the likes of Giratina. And then the likes of Shin Pao and Turbo Iron Hands decks have definitely decreased in number of play. I do think we could definitely see that because they didn't get the results required in that top 16. And I do think it could be definitely on the decline as well from looking at the likes of the City League results as well. So how does this really affect the rest of the City League meta percentage? Well, we're definitely going to talk about that very, very soon, but I could definitely see the increase of Charizard and likes of Lost Box. They did very, very well, and they kind of like, definitely thrive in the initial cut. I think Unfair Stamp, as well as also the likes of Bloody Nuts Luna, really made these decks much more powerful in the archetypes. I do think Gardevoir as well is also a very, very good arc deck right now. It's very good because it can punish the likes of the likes of Charizard and Lost Box by having likes of Clefny, by having the likes of... Um, Plus the main, because they can shut off their very, very key cards. Rotom, um, Comfy, and even something like Radiant Greninja could be very, very impactful to their setups, and slowing them down is very, very strong. But seeing the decrease in the likes of Lukia and Shin Pao, just by a little bit of smidgens, definitely is showing that they're right now maybe not as strong right now in the meta game. So let's right now break down the rest of the top eight and top 16 from the Champions League. Let's start by looking at this Arctina. This is very, very similar to how we see most um, Arctina decks build, but we are seeing some inclusions. The Chura, I think, is very, very good because it definitely help you in that control matchup by picking up any of your damaged cards. Plus also having like an Eerie as well to be that destructive element. A very key card here, they play that Gardenia's Vigor. Well, you don't know what that does, but that draws some cards and they get to put down two grass energies. What I like is to make sure you can power up your Garatinas and your Iron Leaves without really relying on your Arceus in the early games. By ha not having a many board, a ton of energies can really make sure this Gardenia's figure can really, really help you because you might have a lot of energies in this one, hence the high count of grass energy to Psychic. I love the Jet Energy because I really think this deck is really, could it be, it already has a good sort of control matchup, but having the Churro by having the um, Jet Energy is really, really helpful to kind of like make sure you have multiple other attacking option. The 3 2 line of Bibral is also very, very nice. So it's also having a Radiant Guard of War as well to help you in the mirror match. This loss is our team. There isn't much to talk about it, but still very, very aggressive in the Charizard matchup and is very, very strong. 
Another one is very different is this lost tuna. And like I mentioned, this blood balloon Ursa Luna, plus also a cancer in clone and unfair stamp. Very, very different to how we've seen the likes of um, Lost Tina being built in the past. We've seen it either have the Iron Leaves, the Maximum Belt, some like even the Prime Catcher as well. But seeing the like of a Cancer Cohen Unfair Sound plus a Blood and Luna does make a little bit more sense. And we've seen that kind of like be affected in the regular Lost Tina's matchup. Like I mentioned before, the, um, the, um, the, um, Lost, the, not Lost Tina, the Blood and Luna is pretty much like the thing. It's a Radiant Charizard, but in your deck, a very, very powerful Pokemon, has a ton of HP, but also hits for 240 damage, which is very, very powerful if and your damage is or your energy is reduced, no matter of how many bench Pokemon your opponent has. We're in a meta game where we have a lot of bench Pokemon out there. The only one who can really control that is the likes of sometimes Gardevoir or even the likes of them control. But you do, most of the decks right now have at least three to four um, bench Pokemon, which means that this Blood Nerds Luna can sometimes even attack for free, which is really, really powerful. Well, another thing I really find interesting is the Cancel and Clone. Having a high count of boss and some counter ca catchers, make sure we can try and get the Greninja payout as much as possible. I do think it's a nice and quite cute play. Try and get these two prizes from the likes of a it make your Charizard match up a little bit better by not playing like some an Iron Leaves or a Prime Catcher. Having a Cancelling Clone makes a bit of sense to try and help you in that Charizard match to try and get those two prizes that way from a single prize Pokemon. The rest of it is very much similar to how we see most of Lost Tina decks. Two Cramorants is a little bit different to where we also see as well, but I do think they're nice, very nice inclusion as well. And we can see it definitely got rewarded by getting that top eight. And we've seen it definitely continue to success in the Champions League of uh, City Leagues these past weeks. And also let's look at another Lost Box. And this is a little bit different to where we've seen other Lost Box and how we're kind of playing it right now, especially like if you saw the short I posted um, yesterday, it's a little bit different to that one. One thing I like about this one, it does play very limited the support accounts. A lot of decks that you kind of used to seeing the likes of um, Lost Orders or an Iono or anything like that. No, this is very much simple, just four Chorus and two Roxanne's. What I like about the Roxanne and Lost Box is it really makes sure you have a way to punish your opponent. If they kind of go ahead and price or go past that magic three count, you could just shock your opponent by not also hinder your board state at the same time. Not the only thing about Lost Box, which is very difficult, is you don't have that avid draw factor. Yes, you have Raikou and um, Greninja, and this deck actually opts to play a Mew EX as your way to kind of like draw extra cards. But apart from that, you're only reliant on purely the basis of Confi and Chorus to draw multiple cards. So having this Roxanne, going yourself to six, you're not limited to anything, which is where I think this deck is really, really thrice about. Another really key card, which I'm absolutely loving right now, is I'm Bundle in Lost Box. It makes so much sense. You have that amazing gusting effect. Multiple decks do play the likes of Flutterman or something like even Klefki. So kind of having a way to go around them and it constantly recycle makes so much sense. You're already playing four copies of um, Super Rust. You're always going to be reutilizing multiple of your energy. So why not reutilize a gusting effect? Iron Mundle is so, so powerful. You can gain two prizes from the likes of an Iron Hands. You could gain a huge amount of damage output from the likes of Roy Moon and a Blood and Earth Luna. I think it's a very, very powerful sort of um, um, tool card really to utilize in this sort of matchup as well. It can help you in the mirror matchup as well. It also can help you in general to help you draw from Confi by removing the likes of a Flutterman or a Clefki. Very, very powerful. And I really, really like this. I love what's just in the back at top 16. And also let's look at this Lugia. Like I mentioned before, they do play the likes of Survival Cast and Blood Luna Ursa Luna. I love both of these cards. The reason that I think Survival Cast is so much stronger than Master Ball, because you chuck that on the Minchino, all of, sorry, Sinchino, all of a sudden you can use it twice if it doesn't get removed from the likes of the Lost Vacuum. Lost Vacuum is seen a lot of play right now because of how powerful the likes of this is, Maxim Bell, and even the likes of Heroes Cape, and you'll also if you see Garnivar increase, potentially gain an additional prize card from removing the likes of AM, a very, very heavily damaged um, Drifloon or um, Screamtail. Another very key card in this deck is likes of an Azor. Azor makes you can get any of your evolved Pokemon, throw likes of your likes of your Archeops as well as also your Minchinos. I think these are very, very powerful. Plus also a Flutter Maker really help you in the early game. Slowing down your opponents, slowing down likes of Confi, slowing down the likes of Reddit Greninja or any even Bloodiness Luna in your opponent's action spot could be very, very detrimental to many of their plays. I do like this um, Flutter Mank. I've seen it pop up a lot in some Lukia decks. Really to have that bit of a slower approach because you're not really always going to get that call for family or sometimes that read the wind. Sometimes having a Flutter Mank can slow down your opponent constantly because you do want to have that setup. I really, really like this um, Lugia Top 16. A lot of people have put a lot of hate onto Lugia. I think it's definitely much better in this format right now from the likes of the Blood Luna, Luna and Survival Cast. Definitely got to see how it's going to improve because we do have another Champions League in literally a couple of weeks' time. So it's really, really exciting to see. We've got to see more and more results. I think it's basically two weeks today we have another Champions League, which is very, very exciting. Let's see if Lugia actually has that increase. And the last one I talk about is Goldingo got another Top 16. We've seen it do very, very well, obviously, just before um, Christmas. It got that top four, and now we're seeing it get a top 16. This one here is 
very much similar to how we see most decks kind of play. High Council of Irida, the 2 2 Palkia, and Spirit Tomb as well. Spirit Tomb is definitely to help you in the control matchup as well as also likes of Charizard. Stopping down their Luminions and the Rotoms is really, really powerful. And the rest of the item cards are very much similar to how we're seeing. The Prime Catcher plus Cancel Cologne is a good combo to right, re utilize that on Greninja potentially turn two as soon as you get your Palkias out. Plus also having the likes of that Roxanne and I, you know, to really punish your opponent and hopefully heavily draw from like that coin bonus. I do think Golden Go has definitely become much stronger. There's no ability lock right now. And this deck here is fun to see a sort of a rogue arc like get into that top 16. So talking about all this one, I think it's very interesting to see a good variety of decks. We've seen the likes of um, Crimson Haze actually have a big impact in the meta game, like Blunting Nurse Luna. I think it's one of the best cards printed in a while, and on first time, definitely focusing in much of these um, high quality decks. So let's see how it's actually impacted the top 16 results. We saw a huge increase in the likes of Charizard and Lost Box. Charizard making 22.4% and Lost Box being 12.2%. One of the big interesting things right now is we just see here ship power has fallen all the way to 4.8%. This is a huge fall from grace because it's about a 10% archetype. I still think it's a very, very powerful deck, but right now it's a very much hindering to the likes of an unfair stamp. Unfair stamp counter catcher on the two of Backscalibur or Ultra Vibral could really slow it down completely. And the two decks we can really capitalize on are the likes of that Lost Box and the likes of Charizard. So I do think that ship power can really fall from the grace a little bit. We also see the rest of the meta game really increase. The likes of Lugia and um, Lostina have definitely increased in the numbers by being eight point, um, sorry, nine point eight and eight point nine percent. Um, respectively, plus also Gardevoir just being shy of that 8%. I'm a big fan of Gardevoir right now, and it's good to see it actually did carry on for success after its top eight placement in the um, Champions League. Rest of the meta percentage is pretty much normal. We saw definitely an increase in the control archetype. Definitely, they're still focusing on the block packs to serve the pitch up bill, which I think is significantly stronger. But there is a control deck, which I'm definitely intrigued to see what you think about, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Rory Moon and the Ancient Box decks, I'm uh, sorry, the um, Turbo Iron Hands, about 4% and 2.7. And Arctina is still up there because. Ger uh, sorry, not Garatina. Japan absolutely love this deck. And of how powerful the likes of um, Charizard is, it's a really good counter to that deck. The rest of it, I think there's a lot of fun archetypes. We saw a Feraligator win. We saw a really interesting Palkia deck win. We saw the likes of Dialga and see there's some Golden Ghosts as well, really focusing on that 20% of that unknown sort of archetype. I think this is a very good representation of the metagame in the champ in the um sorry the Crimson Hage metagame before we get the Mask of Change, which is next week, which is really, really exciting to talk about. Right now, I want to talk to you, go back to the beginning, talk about Lost Box and why is it so strong by looking at some of the winning lists from the champion. So it's Italy this past weekend. But before we talk about it, let's quickly look at what the um, top, top archetypes were. We see one to three, we saw Charizard obviously was number one, Lost Box was number um, two as well, as also Lost Tina number three, Lugia and Gardevoir both tied in that four and fifth space, and even um, this control getting into that um, sixth space with three wins. I've definitely changed this up just a little bit due to my time at work. I'm not going to put in some of the wins, stuff like that. Let's throw the, the second places, stuff like that. But I do think it's still a good representation about how the meta, what are in fact the top six decks. Now let's look at the Lost Zone because they were just a little bit a uh, little bit ahead of myself. So we can see here, this is a very interesting build. I think this is very much like um, Sable Zard, but it plays Blood Loon Ursa Luna. Why is this good? Well, a lot of people were thinking they love Sable Zard, but Greninja right now is one of the best cards right now printed, and it is so powerful in the Lost Box. But now they can go, why not both? The chucking in a Blood Loon Ursa Luna is so good. Especially in the early game, you could potentially attack us with just attach a jet energy if your parent has four bench Pokemon. You're all of a sudden hitting with 240 damage. You have 260 HP with a very, very difficult weakness to hit. It is a very, very good position right now in the meta game. It is so, so strong and very, very aggressive. I love having the, the uh, multiple counts of um, Crown Rants and Sable Eye in case they're prized, but also you can attack with them multiple times. This is not focusing on the likes of the V attackers, like the likes of um, Roy Moon or even the likes of. Um, um, Iron Hand. So having a very much thinner line of that, you're very, you could be very aggressive with the likes of a Blood Nurse Luna. Still paying the four copies of Mirage Gate because you have very good attackers. You can attack with the likes of Blood Nurse Luna very early on, so it's also the likes of Greninja. I love Iron Bundle. Like I mentioned before, it is so good. You can like, have that gusting effect, and also you can take those easy prize cards from the likes of Blood Nurse Luna or even Greninja. Still play the high count of um, um, Calcium Clone, plus also a Prime Catch and I am. Um, um, counter catcher plus one bosses orders as well so you can really really capitalize on gain out that radiant greninja 
plus the council kind of shuts off the likes of um, cleft keys and the likes of um, Fatame. So it also has a double edge, so it can really help you in that sort of matchup. I love a crisis punch because you can chuck this and get on the likes of a Cramorant, on the likes of a Bloody Nurse Luna, and they can attack their attacks, attack for a lot less, potentially even attacking you for free, which is really, really nice to see. Do 280 damage in a late game is very, very strong. The rest of this deck, I think, is very much similar to how we're seeing Lost Box. It's a very nice one. I think this is basically a, a disabled side 2.0, but focusing on Greninja and also Bloody Nurse Luna, I really am a big fan of this one. Another deck which is very much focusing on Lost Box is here by having the 2-2 um, line of um, Burnett with that Puppet Offering ability, which means you can put both of them in the Lost Zone, and then if you do, you get to get a supporter card from your discard pile. I really, really like this, because it is a way for you to constantly fuel your Lost Zone, but also get any of your multiple supporters. You can, it's basically BSing it. You can get the likes of your Chorus, you can get the likes of that new Lana supporter, which can make you get any of your Psychic Energy, plus also that Saber line. This is very much focusing on, like, a... Um, Sable Zard sort of build. It has a very, very high count of Sable Life, but instead of playing the likes of a Radiant Charizard, you have the likes of Blood and Ursa Luna. By not playing the likes of a Mirage Gate, you're really going to be attacking with this in a much later game. It's uh, when your opponent has a much higher bench fit space, or sometimes you could take them by surprise by attaching one NG if they have the likes of um, four bench Pokemon. But you are really focusing on the likes of attacking into any of your opponent you have with the likes of Cramran and cleaning up with the likes of Sable Light and Blood and Ursa Luna. You might go, Charlie, why is there Cancer Clone here if there's no Greninja? Like I just mentioned, it shuts off the Clefkeys, it shuts the Fluttermane. It makes sure you can actually attack your Poke um, and use your um, attack with Cramorant and use your Confies. I think it's a very, very powerful one. I really like the TM Devo, making sure you can spread multiple damage with Sable Light, then all of a sudden TM Devo and take multiple prize cards that way. It's a very, very nice way. And I think it's a really good, we're seeing Lost Box have this evolution. We're not seeing it just play this very linear approach. We've seen it have that creativity. We saw that just now, if I can update the Sable side, we see this one focusing purely on Sable Light and can really accelerate into it much quicker by having likes of that public offering, the um, Lost Vacuum as well, also Lost City as well. Multiple ways to fuel your Lost Zone can potentially get to 10 right there and there by turn two. I really am a big fan of Lost Box and seeing all these variants we've talked about today, all of them are different but have a very interesting strategy to win. Now I want to totally talk about Gardevoir. I'm a big fan of this one, I've been testing a lot and this was a very interesting winning list. Why could this be a little bit more interesting? Well, it does play the likes of a Gallade. We're not seeing most of these in these decks, but I do think the Gallade is pretty interesting. What the Gallade does is pretty much you can get any support you want from your deck and pop into your hand. I think it's a very, very good ability. Pretty much getting any, pretty much a Luminion on a stage, um, stage two Pokemon, but having no hindrance is really, really strong. With a decent attack, which can preserve some energy. What I think is very, very strong right now with Gardevoir is you have to go wide, but also play the likes of the um, Rathachuro. Rathachuro to pick up your own Gardevoir, so in theory, you're going to have no um, two-price liability on the board. Just having likes of a Drifloon or Screamtail, it's really, really strong. And having the Gardevoir, I'm only put it into play when you need it. The tool cards is definitely the likes of Bravery, Charm, and Luxury Escape, because you're only going to really need happy three big attacks. Probably the likes of a Drifloon or Screamtail to get these big one-hit KOs. Yes, the Luxurious Cape can effectively uh, make one of these a two price Pokemon, but having that in survey and guys, what is much, much better to your strategy. Again, like I mentioned, Unfair Stamp is seen there because it is such a strong A spec. You can kind of like blow back because you're always going to be high in prices. Guardwell isn't going to be. It's kind of like fine if it's still one, something even three prizes behind, because it can really capitalize on that one. That punishment with that plus AM counter catcher, you can really, really take steal a game back from an absolutely losing position. It still plays a high count of like some Arvin, TM Devo, but also a one copy of Eerie. Because you can kind of like get rid of it, even likes matchups of Shin Pao, get rid of the likes of their superior injury retrieval, well, sometimes even the likes of their rare candy, really slow them down as well. I do think one thing that Gardevoir could sometimes miss is maybe one rare candy, because I it's, there's some mo multiple times in the game which I go, I've got nothing set up, uh, but I do have a Gardevoir kind of rolls. If I just had one rare candy from an Arvin, I could all of a sudden go get Gardevoir out, and then all of a sudden I'm attacking again. So I do think that could be a way of how Gardevoir decks can really approach into this one, play one copy of Red Handy, but I think this is a very, very interesting build and I'm a big fan of this one. And also no Radiant Greninja, which has kind of become a little bit common over there in Japan. Now I want to look at this Zard Control before we talk about a very fun deck as well. This is a very interesting one, still focusing on Control Archetype by having the likes of Pidgeot to get anything you want to have, the Chi Yu to kind of get that mill effect, and obviously Blood and Escalina to really clean up. Plus also, because you've got to be behind in prizes, you can attack with the likes of that Luxray to really help you against the likes of that Pidgeot, as well as also the likes of the Archetypes like Lugia. But they do play a 202 line of Charizard. 
you might go, why on earth is this very much very much in this deck? And a lot of people have been talking about this one. The reason why I think this could be very strong because you can really power up some other attackers in the late game. But it's also, if you mill your opponent out of multiple resources and potentially they've taken like four or five prize cards and all of a sudden you're like, oh, they can't get anything, then they might try and like sort out the clock. All of a sudden you can chuck in the Charizard and you're taking like pretty much doing 300 damage turn after turn after turn and the opponent can't respond to anything, you're in a very, very winning position, especially the Chucker likes the hero escape on. They have, basically, they have 430 HP and the opponent can't want to kill you while you, after you've milled all their resources. It's very, very powerful. And I'm a big, big fan of this in this deck. I do think this could be a really fun way of how people are playing control. A lot of people have thought, well, if I want to play Luxray, I basically take these two out and just chuck in the likes of a Luxray. In theory, yes, you could. But I do think there's a very interesting way of how people are adapting to play control. I, that's one, one thing I absolutely love about this format. We see multiple different avenues for control and seeing that team up with control, uh, best way to play control pitcher with one of the best decks right now, Charizard, it's a really, really fun, good amalgamation of multiple decks and can easily execute both of their strategies. And the last deck I want to talk about is Palkia. This is a very, very fun deck, very, very aggressive. And it's good to see Palkia is actually still seeing some play. You play the likes of the... Um, the um, Iron Valiant to get some uh, damage boosting effect by sort of pinging some damage cards. You play the Bombarder EX, which we haven't seen in so long. But again, um, we can only use the attack if you go first. Um, you can flood the board with multiple um, high um, V and EX Pokemon, which is really, really strong. I love the Articuno and Blood Luna Spoon. It's other attacking options. The Prime Catcher makes sense because you can still utilize the likes of an Iron Le Iron Valiant. I love the likes that you can still power up the likes of a Shin Pao to get your energies required. Plus also the likes of a Greninja as well, use as another attacking option. Option. TM Devo as well is pretty good because sometimes you're not going to get these big one hit KOs multiple times. You play Iron Valiant as well to ping loads of damage. So TM Devo definitely makes a little bit of sense in this deck as well. I think it's a very, very fun deck. With having no Melanie, having the likes of an EXP share is a way to kind of like keep your, your energies around and constantly get streaming on your attacking options without using the likes of a um some of these uh, V-Star attack every single time. I do think it's a very, very fun deck, and I'm glad it did get impact to get the win. And I think it's a good way to kind of like finish sort of this episode by looking at this very fun deck. We're still seeing creativity kind of flow, even likes of how powerful Lost Box really has become. So definitely looking ahead, will the next meta actually impact the format? Obviously, we see likes of Ogre Pond kind of love, had a lot of hype towards, but will we see likes of that Luxury, which we talked about? Will we see some of the brand new sort of ace specs as well? The Legacy Energy, the um, loot box, and lobby, sorry, surprise box, kind of see that impact and start to slowly make their way into certain decks. Or that really powerful Palafin, which I love. Is the meta just right for Lost Box right now? I generally think it is in a very, very good spot. There are so many ways to kind of play it. You can even play the, the um, upgraded Sable Star deck. You can play the very high basic ones. You can also play Lost Box. Sorry, the... Um, you know, very much focusing just on save light. It was also playing the likes of Giratine. There are so many ways to play Lost Box right now. I think the meta is really in a, exactly the right spot for Lost Box. And I'm a big, big fan about how it's going to adapt. Plus also, is the Rise of Guard what a good thing? I think it is. I think it's taken a lot of people by surprise. It's a market type which people kind of like rule down when that's eh, pretty dead right now because you don't have the Mirage Step, you don't have the likes of the Shine Arcana or Fog Crystal, but people have shown them. It's had multiple top forwards in these huge events right now. So I do think Guard War is in a very good stuff, and I think it is a good thing. Having the likes of these very strong single price attacking options going into a very much a, I would say we're in a very good uh, meta game for single price Pokemon is in a very much a good thing. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, looking ahead video. I'll be back next week and hopefully later on this week as well, look, giving a more of an update of my top eight sort of um, lists right now to play in the format. Let's also look at expanded as well. Hope you guys enjoy this video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.